Hi there. Welcome to Dance Odyssey, a travel show that brings you the world through the lens of dance and the music that is so closely intertwined with it. Today we are in Vancouver, British Columbia, and we're exploring the immensely popular urban salsa dance scene and its major representative, the internationally recurring Salsa Congress. Hey guys, we're Ataka. Alemana, and we are here at the Vancouver International Salsa Festival 2013. If you're not here, you are missing the amazing you festival. You are, you are. And no one can comment better on the Congress phenomenon than the man who almost single-handedly started it all. In 1997, a young man in Puerto Rico, Eli Rizarri, started the concept of the Congresses, and that Congress is still going on, the one in Puerto Rico. I went in 98, I liked what I saw, and in 99 I started the first one in, in Los Angeles. We stayed partners until about 2000, then we kind of split and we went each our own way. I continued to do LA thinking that was the only one I was going to do, but a lot of people from around the world wanted to start that concept and they liked the philosophy of LA which was really supporting the dancers and doing everything we could for the respect for the dancers worldwide. Basically what ended up happening is today, 15 years later, I co-produce 42 different events every single year. I'm on the road about 50 weeks out of the year, 300,000 miles that I travel. Wait in line tomorrow. We will make it a very Professional dancers arrive from around the world in order to teach and perform in Vancouver. Of your band. We'll make it worth the wait. We'll make it worth the wait. This is very exciting. We're actually right now in the presence of a legend, a salsa legend that is, Mr. Eddie Torres himself, the Mambo King. And we're watching him perform on the stage and we're hoping to get a chance to talk to him afterwards. I've had wonderful, wonderful, a wonderful career. I've had some really great memories working with the late, great Tito Puente for many years and I've been traveling all over the world. So this for me has been really a blessing to be able to do something that you love and you have a real passion for it. I think it's just the passion that I have for this music and for this dance since I was very young and the passion's still alive, the fire's still burning, so I'm just happy to still be here after 50 years now of doing this. I remember being in a congress in, in UK and I saw some people perform and she was my age, one of the dancers, and I was like, oh my God, she's so young, I wish I could do that, I want to dance on those stages. And a year later, I performed that stage. From Oakland, California, USA, we are Salsa Mania in Vancouver. We founded a company in the year 2000, um, and in the company, you know, it's, it's Latin dance, it is salsa, so you would think that in the dance company, the majority of people would be Latin. No. <laughs> It's like everybody else is almost no Latin, Latinos in our dance company. There's like, I don't know how many countries do we represent within the company. It's, you name the country, we have it. Yes, it's about performing and competing. But one of the things that really, really, we really like to focus us is on training. And so right now we have, in the Bay Area, that's like one of the biggest dance companies. I've been dancing uh, since, seriously since 1999. Um, before that, this is kind of the music I grew up with. Um, and along the way I met Liz, and along the way I met uh, Ronnie and Mayuko in the year 2005-2006, that's when I met these wonderful people. The Touch Bachata comes from our company's name, our, our company's name is Island Touch Dance Academy. Um, you know, we, we like, the, the, the key word touch is, is basically touching the world, that's our slogan as you I might, I might say. So, um, it's just what we believe is our style bachata we don't necessarily um, distinguish ourselves one specific style we love um, bachata tradicional which is more the classical bachata we like the urban we like the modern um, so we just do it all both of us when we first became partners in 2008 we wanted to do this um, as a career and we wanted to travel the world we just didn't think it was going to happen so suddenly um, with the video we got really really lucky we hit the lottery with that one we didn't expect it that wasn't the plan we just wanted to put it up and then it became viral um, and then promoters started seeing that video and hiring us for it. In 
normally you will hear about Dominican bachata, pop bachata, different kind of bachata, right? The one that we're focusing right now, that is what we're trying to take our name with, is Bolero Bachata. So it's really romantic, uh, real passionate. It has a story behind of love and forgiving him. Then I try for him to forgive me. So you will see a lot of passion there. Stories about how each Congress professional started on their exciting career are as diverse as the dancers themselves. It started as a hobby. <laughs> and then when you start liking your hobby more than your work, there's a problem with that. Yeah, I had a great job, and uh, I actually decided to leave my job, and my parents were really upset uh, because we got the offer to go to Hong Kong, and I would have to go for a month. So my job was not going to let me go for a month and come back. So I decided to quit my job and go to Hong Kong for a month. And I'll say, I'll just come back and get another job. But then um, I liked it. And then when we talked, we decided to say, OK, let's just do it full time and let's try it out to see how, how far we could go. So I stopped working. And I started working and just doing this with John. And then we started doing it little by little. And all of a sudden, now we're so busy. I, don't, I think I will have time to do something else, but I wouldn't want to do something else. I really like what I do, and I think we have trusted each other a lot to, to work together, and that's one of the things I enjoy the most. I ended up in Hong Kong teaching for three and a half months, salsa, in Hong Kong, out of <laughs> the middle of nowhere in Hong Kong. And uh, by just working with Liz out there in Hong Kong and created a small a community out of nothing, all of a sudden these people are community, camaraderie, and, and for me to have that impact on people, that for me was the aha moment. I want to do this. You know, you get up whenever you want to and then you work for yourself and at the same time you're making a big difference in people's life. It's like came to Salsa in sort of a weird way. It was, I moved to the Bay Area. Um, I didn't have any previous uh, dance experience, but I just started taking Salsa classes as a hobby, just as a way to try something new. Um, and I just sort of got addicted to the dance. And eventually I found John and Liz and Mayuko and somehow got guys performing <laughs> somehow got it performing and and then I, I found a partner and I started choreographing my own routines and I was really drawn to the activity of like expressing creatively um, sort of a vision through dance I've always danced since I was little that was always been my passion I never I decided in my high school I would never let it go but I guess dancing in salsa mania there was a small festival when I just started with the team. I never danced with these guys, and there was that one show that I have to step up, be one of the pro team members, and just dance. I was so afraid, but that was my best show. It's my most special show in Salsa Mania. And after that moment, I knew, OK, I belong to this team. I love this team, and I will dance as a professional. In order to be successful in the salsa world, you've got to have great chemistry with your dance partner. My first partner and my favorite partner is my wife, Maria Torres. I danced with her for over 20 years. For me, it's all about dancing from the heart and soul, and that's what Shiny means to me. When I dance with her, it's not that she's just dancing from the brain. She really dances from heart and soul. She feels the music. I've been training with different type of people in the past, and everybody have different style. But with Eddie, I feel like he brings something else out of me, and I'm, I'm more connected to who I am as a dancer, to my feelings, and. Like I always tell Eddie, it's like I go on stage with, with him and it's almost like three minutes of, of a dream, of euphoria. I don't remember anything when I come down. I just, just you're so in the moment and that's what I feel. I, I let go so much and I've never been in that place before. I'm blessed to have this opportunity to have 
these beautiful partners that I've had and sharing the stage. And for me, it's always been about having fun on stage, off stage, whatever, wherever I dance. And that's the reason why I still dance, because it's just a lot of fun and it's so refreshing and it's therapy for the soul for me. Living the Congress lifestyle means traveling around the globe, and that brings its own challenges and rewards. I think the best part about it is obviously you get to see some wonderful places, you get to travel all over the world, um, which in a normal job you really can't do that. Um, but you meet awesome people along the way. We've become friends with a lot of people across the globe that you wouldn't normally get a chance to meet. So these events are really cool just to establish connections and relationships. As far as like the downfall, I guess, of traveling so much, it does take a tear or a wear on your body. Um, I get tired very much and I'm tired all the time, but I do have him for energy, so it's great. And we get to learn from some of the best people in the world. Um, you know, I think that's one of the biggest perks in, in, in this job, in this career, is that um, you know, when you see Eddie Torres, when you see Juan Matos, and you see Adolfo, Michael Fons, all these people that you don't live near, you're able to utilize these events and you're traveling to be able to see them, take classes with them, um, and learn from the best in the world. So the Vancouver International Salsa Congress, like many other congresses, is not just about performances. It's also about learning how to dance, or if you're already a dancer, perfecting your skills. So we're just about to check out a group of people who are beginners, and many of them have never danced salsa before. And this is the festival's beginner salsa boot camp. And we're going to go and see that now. So come on, let's go in. <laughs> Recuerda que ya ves, ya hace como un año, veniste acompañado y lejos tuve que quedar. There's nothing quite as exciting as the beginners taking their first Yo sé que estás picando cada vez que me ves pasar. Now, with this academic structure, which is now worldwide, I mean, all the teachers basically are using the system. It has really now, it, it's made it easier for students to learn it. It's, it's a, a mental approach which they understand the academics behind the dance, dancing on timing, the whole structure. Even, even with choreography, now people understand w where they are in the music. There's a price to pay now because um, I grew up all my life listening to music and dancing what I felt naturally. Then I learned the timing and the academic structure of the dance. So I see that uh, sometimes I, I, I see what's going on today, which is actually a great thing because you see these phenomenal talents that are coming up in this generation. But it's almost like I would like to strip them away from their academics, throw them all in the jungle again, and get them all really connected naturally to the dance, where it's not just from the mind, but it's from heart and soul. I feel like people that are learning mechanics and fundamentals and counts and technique, they need to use that information as a tool to find out their movement and, and explore the dance rather than just stick to it all the time. Dancing relies on a lot of rehearsal before we get to that performance moment. And we're just about to check out rehearsals for tonight's World of Dance uh, evening here at the Vancouver International Salsa Festival that will feature salsa, bachata, kizomba, Latin dances that this festival celebrates, as well as other forms of dance. <laughs> Salsa Congress dance culture has dramatically matured in the last decade. That has transformed the salsa social scene and performing scene tremendously. W uh, having these congresses on such an international scale and having so many of them 
How, what do you? What would you think are the biggest changes? How has it contributed to salsa as a dance and as a the music and the culture around it? Well, I, th I think we've created something incredible in changing people's lives. Because for me, salsa is not just about the music and the dance. It's about it's a form of living. Not only the the technical aspect of the dance got so much bigger in the last ten years, but it also the professionalism behind it. We went from one congress in 1999 to thousands and hundreds and thousands of congresses around the world. You go to China, there is a congress. You go to the Philippines, there is a congress. You go to uh, <laughs> Israel, there is a congress. <laughs> the least expected place in the whole entire world, there is a congress. There is this madness about salsa because it brings so many p different people from different backgrounds all onto, under one roof. And to dance, you don't need to speak, the, I mean, we speak the same language, which is the dance itself. No longer Salsa's little cousin, Bachata, a dance from the Dominican Republic, has recently conquered the Congress circuit. Over time, it just became just a, an important aspect of the diversity of each event, you know, adding Bachata to Salsa events. And now it's every, almost every Salsa event in the world either has a Bachata room or they've changed their name to either a Salsa Bachata Congress, festival, what have you. So um, it's been such an amazing feeling and, and, and to see the change and the addition that Bachata has, been, has done to, to Salsa. There's already events that have focused a lot on, only on Bachata. There's, for example, Los Angeles, they have a Bachata Congress where they have about 20 instructors from all over the world in chess Bachata. You have rooms full of like thousand people just dancing Bachata for all night, like nonstop. And, and you know, it's, it's going to go back to to sharing Salsa again. I mean, Salsa is what everybody loves. Salsa is fun. Bachata, everybody thinks it's romantic and it can be a, a, a little bit less fun, but no, it's actually the other way around. Bachata has a lot of musicality. When you play with the guitar and you play with the footwork, when you follow the drums and the bongos, it can be a lot of fun as well. So I, I think it's gonna, it's gonna grow like every, everything else. It took a while um, for the Salsa Congresses to start adding the bachata. I know like some of the bigger ones like LA Salsa Congress, New York. New York. It took a while for them to actually be like, oh, okay, they see the benefit from having bachata because it's, well, it's extra money in their pocket, but it also is part of this Latin community now. It's not just this little, you don't just dance bachata in a nightclub anymore. Now it's, you have classes, people are actually teaching it constantly, they're performing it. So I think they tried to just open it up. Even with dozens of congresses around the world to choose from, Vancouver rates pretty high on the performers list. Vancouver has a very multicultural dance floor, like uh, everybody that comes social dancing is from all roots and everybody's eager to learn. And I think this is why we travel a lot to keep growing and to keep bringing you know, the material to the students. But everywhere I go, it's, it's average to, let's say, 50 people in a class. Here we have 80 to 90 people in one class. So it's, it, I don't know, it's, it's, it's for some reason, there's more students in Vancouver that are willing to, to learn with us. My experience here, it has always been very, it's been great. Everyone's been very uh, friendly, party. They love to party a lot. That's one of the things that I really enjoyed about coming to this event. I feel like it's a unity and also having fun and social dancing with everyone. That's one of the things that I noticed between differences from some other events. They've done a really great job. The hospitality is fantastic. Um, they're really here to make the people have a good time. So I think, that, I think that's one thing that may be a little different than the others. Um, I find that this one is very focused on having guests have a good time. I travel a little bit around the world and, and I'm telling you that this is one of the best congresses the best, the best so far. Latin dance is so all-consuming that sometimes it's easy to forget that it just wouldn't exist without its music. Tito Puente says something very interesting that I never forgot. He says that once a, a music has a dance, it perpetuates the music and it helps to perpetuate the dance. I'd like to see it 
grow even more. I mean, uh, a lot of people are saying it's dying, but I, I don't see it dying. That's why I'm, I started producing music. I felt it was dying a little bit, so I wanted to bring back uh, the old styles mixed with the new elements. 21 years of dancing on stage with live music. Every time I would be dancing, I'd turn around and i hear this incredible band that Tito had, and Tito back there playing timbales, and I've had so many beautiful memories. We danced for President Bush and we travel around the world. And I thought it was really important because you're obviously really passionate about the music and the music and the dance together, not just about the dance. As you say, you think it's important that when people teach that they name the artists to uh, whose songs they're dancing to and kind of educate people about, uh, as you say, these amazing uh, musicians that provide the music that we dance to, without which the dance wouldn't without exist. Without them, we wouldn't have the music. We wouldn't have the steps. Everyone's so concerned about, you know, is it on one or on two or the Cuban style? You know what? Without the blessing of those above and those that are still with us and the music that they gave us, um, we wouldn't be able to do the one, two, three, five, six, seven. As long as artists are putting out creative and amazing music, we're going to continue to be inspired to make new shows, teach new classes. We await what artists have to put out there. But I do know that a lot of artists that we've met um, basically feed off of what they see us doing as well, different artists. So many have all said that I continue to get motivated what, what you guys doing with our music, with other people, stuff like that. So I know what we do definitely pushes them a little bit as well. So as long as we keep pushing each other, we're going to be just fine. We're here, the stage is set, the audience is filtering in, and we're excited for tonight's uh, Salsa Congress World of Dance performance. There'll be some salsa, Latin dancing, as well as dancing from uh, other areas such as uh, uh, belly dance, Indian dance, and we can't wait to see it all. Um, the tango scene was really great, and also the group called Fresh. They were amazing. So I liked the, um, I think it was the repertoire company uh, near the end, and also the last dance group that was the uh, more modern group. I really liked them. Yeah, and I like all the salsa stuff. One of the performance, performance that we watch is like from back 1960s, you know, where the salsa came from and, and all the history. So it was pretty good. It was amazing. The salsa side of things was very, I can't do it, so it's very interesting to watch. Do you uh, normally dance salsa socially? Um, I've been taking classes just for a few months out in uh, Surrey, BC. No. I do. I dance mostly salsa for the last three years. Um, I've done tango for a few months and I did um, hip hop break dancing for a couple months as well. What do you think about that, bringing dances like hip hop, belly dance, uh, tango to Salsa Congress? You know, in Vancouver, we are like multicultural city, right? So we have like belly dancing and uh, some bhangra. There was like some sort of a balio dance mix. So it's a combination of all these different dance. It's really, really creative. People come from all over the world. I wanted to see the, the dancers. And I love dancing, so that's kind of the reason to come, right? I wanted to watch world-class dancing, and I got to see it. I hope that before I leave this earth that um, the new generation will educate themselves. So every Congress I go to, I do a history of salsa lesson where I talk about 
who these people are and how Fania or how Salsa changed my life. I've been to yours in Montreal, actually. Uh, did yeah, you like it? Was, yes, I thought it was really interesting. My goal, besides my sobriety and my grandchildren, which I love dearly, is to educate and uh, to help those kids so that they can learn a little bit about this history. Because if we don't bring the past to the present, what is there for the future? The more the community supports the events, the dancers, the parties, that and and teaches young kids. That's how it can also continue, I feel, for the next generation. I believe bachata is gonna be continue to get bigger and bigger and, and you know as bachata gets bigger, salsa is just gonna follow it. You know, and it's always because salsa's been around for so long. So well, all we're trying to do is use bachata to continue pushing salsa and bachata. Even though the Salsa Congress scene is vibrant now, some wonder what the future has in store. I think it's an important thing because it's for every city that hosts it, the local dancers get a chance to learn and dance and meet other people from different places. Some very experienced dancers um, from the other side of the world they may never get a chance to meet or learn from. So if you're a local dancer and you have a Congress in your own city, it's such a great opportunity for you to, to see that in person and to learn from them. I think everything has a potential to saturate, but I think there's so many motivated dancers and people that truly love the, the art of dance that it's going to be very tough for the for that the word saturation to, to come up. Um, we just got to continue to stay motivated um, in our artistry as well. We can't stay you know on what we do. We have to continue growing and learning. It's always going to be the, the question of maintaining the dance and keeping it alive because as, as I've observed every 15 or 20 years, people are looking for something new, something different. Just like in the 70s, the dance called The Hustle came to New York and it kind of just blew the mambo right out, right out the water. So now I think after the, all these years of people enjoying salsa, of course, now we have a bachata. We have kisomba. We have all these other different beautiful dances that are coming in. For me, it would be a question of enjoy everything, but don't, don't like forget and leave behind or let die this beautiful dance, because I think this dance is so, it's a spiritual experience. The next two years are gonna be incredible. So if you're working on a documentary, also, I, this is the time to do it. So that's all for the Salsa Congress stop of our international tour. Join us for another exciting dance from another wonderful location next time on Dance Odyssey. And I think I'm gonna go in and get some social dancing on. What's different about salsa is that it's a social dance. So it's not the kind of dance that you just do in the studio or just do on stage. Because it's a social dance, we crave the social aspect, right? So when we when we have congresses, we want to see the performances, we want to learn how to dance. But what people also look forward to is the time that we spend actually socializing and dancing with other people. Hot social dancing, amazing workshops and performances, it is tough to choose my favorite Vancouver Congress memory. But nothing tops dancing with the Mambo King himself, and not even a mic malfunction could stop me.